everyone, it's Kirsten and Jeannie with Six Figure Business Coaching, and we're so excited that you're here with us today. So today, I'm really excited to bring to you Kathleen Melvin of Right Cat Creative. She is also a TED Talk speaker. Today, we're going to talk all about landing pages. So Kathleen is going to help us work through that whole process. So welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Very excited. Let's start off like... How would you describe a landing page? If someone was asking you, what is a landing page? So a landing page is going to be a separate piece of real estate. It, it can either be connected to your website or it can be a standalone thing. And it's where you're going to send someone for a really specific action, depending on what you need for your business. But once you go to a landing page, that page is going to have one singular thing that you want your reader to accomplish. So that's really the difference between a standard web page and then a landing page itself. Awesome. And there, there's considered like long form and short form. How does that yeah. work? So there are a lot of different kinds of landing pages. Okay. That's that, 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 <laughs> to my knowledge. Long and short. That's all I can. Yeah. And so long form sales pages are one that most of us are really familiar with especially if we if our businesses are online service businesses another kind of landing page that is really prevalent is a splash page and i like the name of that it sounds very fun and those are pages that will pop up when you first arrive at a website and you have to click a little box Another page that you might not consider a landing page, but really is a confirmation page or a thank you page. And so you can do more than just say, thank you for your purchase. Thank you for signing up. You can direct them on that landing page, on that confirmation page to do whatever you want to do next, want them to do next. And then the last type of landing pages is really what I want to focus on today is opt-in pages. And opt-in pages are everywhere. Opt-in pages are what you click on and land on when you want to enter a contest or when you want to get somebody's freebie and then your email gets added to their list, an opt-in landing page rather than a long form sales page. So those are all yeah. of the different types of landing pages that you can do yeah. cool things with. It's funny when you were talking about the upsell or sending them to the next thing. It's so amazing that no matter where you stop in those landing pages, it just totals up what you've agreed to and builds you. So it's so yeah. amazing though. And I think it really is an art, but yeah, it's so amazing to think of all the things that you can do um, with landing pages. And I think yeah. most of our clients are really probably focusing more on lead magnets or opt-ins, so to speak. Those freebie opt-in landing pages are going to be a huge part of that for you, whether you're just sharing it on social media or sharing it with your network, or if you go on a podcast and the podcast host says, how can people get in touch with you? You have to have that client or that customer in your mind, know really who they are, know where they came from. So that if somebody it, it is a super fan, but yeah, yeah. it's always just about learning about what feels authentic to you, mm -hmm. what feels right for you when it comes to creating your content. Yeah. And your it's taking that data and saying, what do I want to set aside? What do I want to use going forward? Yeah. And I think that that's really a wonderful way that we do learn as marketers. We are, we are serving people who are similar to us because we are serving based on our own experiences. And so if we can communicate to people that just makes you much more powerful as a service provider. One of the things that if you decide to build your landing page through a service like ConvertKit or ActiveCampaign or one of those, it, you'll be able to have that landing page that doesn't have a button to go home, a button to contact you at the top. If you have Squarespace or WordPress, it's always going to have that navigation bar at the top, right? So you can absolutely create a landing page on your own site to the creator tools. You can create your new website page, build it out just as 
if it's your homepage or your about page, you don't need a service to create your landing page, but it has a lot of benefits. And once you're ready to make that jump, do it. (laughs) So the next thing we're going to talk about are the elements of a landing page. Like, how do you do this? How do you script a really good landing page? So we're really excited to learn what some of the foundational points are with a good landing page. Yeah. So I think that something that's really important when you're building out your, your opt-in page, when you're asking somebody to sign up for something is assuming that they are seeing this product that you're offering for the very first time. This is the first time that their eyes are on it. And so you really want to highlight in the briefest way, (laughs) simplicity is really important on an opt-in page. So there's usually a headline and then a little description and then a call to action and a button that clicks. And so in your headline, like I said, the job is to really get them to read the next line. And that's really true of all copywriting. So you've got your headline and then your description is, should really answer the question, so what? And that can feel kind of snarky, you got a seven-year-old snow. And so that's really what you want your description to focus on is those benefits that how this is going to change the life of the person once they click the button and download your freebie or download your tiny offer. And then... Your call to action, like we talked about way at the top, is there's only one on a landing page. So those are really the elements of the copy. And then on a landing page, and this is outside of my expertise as a copywriter, but you also want to have a graphic. You want to have something that is eye-catching so that screen readers can grab that and read out loud to visually impaired people so they know what's shown in that eye-catching graphic. It's interesting because with our clients, we're talking about creating content, ideally video content. And we talk about different pillars of content. One of the things that I think is really important is that your lead magnet has to connect with whatever, if it's a call to action in a video Mm -hmm. or a call to action on a social media post, but you can't be talking about dog walking and then offer a lead magnet for business, right? And I know that's an extreme exaggeration, but even within a business, you really want to make sure that your whatever that call to action is complementary to the content. Yeah. And I think that's another thing that people have to realize is you're probably going to have multiple lead magnets or opt-in because that's how you're going to have the right call to action for the content that person has read. Um, If I'm doing a video on why hiring a marketing virtual assistant could be smart, I'm not going to offer those templates. I'm going to offer our guide on hiring a virtual assistant. I think that sometimes that in the beginning, I think we all miss that. When you first get started, you don't really think about how everything has to go together. And Uh, yeah, and that's really all of your content and copy, right? You want your social media posts to thematically align with emails that you're sending out and thematically align with your website so that as your prospect is experiencing each one of those things, it doesn't feel like you're having an identity crisis. Yes. And I think that your lead magnets are a great example of that. And also like I talked a little bit before about being able to segment. So like I, as a messaging expert, I serve people in two ways. One is through done for you copywriting, writing people's websites, writing people's sales pages and their email sequences. And then the other is as a TEDx coach, taking people through that journey of what they want their message to be, getting it down on paper, rehearsing, memorizing and ready to perform. And so it's important for me, sometimes my ideal clients are the same for both of those sides. They need help with copywriting and they also want to give a TEDx talk. Sometimes they want one or the other. And so I have a few different lead magnets. I have my TEDx planner that people can download to to schedule out their time. I have, I think that the one that I gave you guys to share today is five essential rinse and repeat blog posts to create unlimited blog content. And so that's going to be for someone who really wants to up their SEO and have those regular updates for their audience. And then I have a couple of others that every time someone opts in, like I said, in my, I use ConvertKit and in my ConvertKit, 
account, they get a little tag that says, oh, here's the one that they opted into. So I can have at least a little bit of understanding of where they're coming from. One of my opt-ins is a, a guide that's I don't remember the title exactly, but it's seven strategies I use to hit my first $7,000 a month as a, an online service provider. And so if somebody downloads that, I know that they're probably at or under that revenue level. Right. And so I can nurture them as an emerging business owner in a way that I wouldn't with my seven figure clients that I write for. Exactly. It, yeah. We, it's interesting because the course, the program that we sell is by application only because it's really important that the people that come into our program are at the right place in their business to hire a virtual assistant. And they're really ready to level up their marketing, but we're always surprised at how many times people come in on multiple lead magnets. We can also see, you know, what pages they've landed on in our website. So it's really interesting just to see, because again, booking a call, the call to action to book a call is scary if you don't know someone. Right. So they might sign up for several different opt-ins and then they say, okay, they've given us great value. We watch their videos. We like them enough. We can have a conversation to find out you know, if we're a good fit for what they do. So I think it's really important, like you said, to be able to tag them and to see that journey. Mm -hmm. And I feel like every time we look at our analytics and look at the people that are actually coming into our program, it is surprising, like how many of them have signed up for more than one thing. And to see, oh, what was the first thing? Yes. What caught their eye first? Yes. And yes. then what was the journey that brought them? And you can see that map as you look at the list of when they downloaded different things. Yeah. Yeah. It, I want to add, there's one other thing I would talk about with regards to landing pages. And that is, if you can make sure that you're capturing their first name as well as their mm -hmm. email address, because mm -hmm. when you got your, when you write your follow-up emails and all the information they get, it's so much more effective and feels more personal when you can say, hi, Susie, thanks for asking for this instead of hi, friend, or hi. Yeah, that's a great point. And the more fields that you ask them to fill out, the less likely someone is to fill it out. But absolutely, first name, email address, two fields people are used to, you don't need their last name. A lot of the time I see that I see forms that ask you for first and last, but you don't need the last name. And there, I don't know the percentage, but there's a certain percentage of every extra field, a certain number of people won't fill it out. Right. So absolutely, Jeannie, first name, email address are what you want to collect. Yeah, That's what I would say basic. Yeah. And then the software that we use, if people put in their phone number, we can text them as well, but you mm -hmm. really have to give them some type of incentive to do that. Would you like me to text you this document as well? And you could mm -hmm. make that so it's not required. Yeah, absolutely. Phone numbers are tricky. Like I am always suspicious if someone's asking me for my phone number, but if they ask for it, like I signed up for a challenge in the last couple of weeks where they asked for my phone number and they didn't tell me why they wanted my phone number. And I was like, I don't want to give my phone number, but I wanted to do the challenge. Right. So I entered my phone number and then I got texts from them and I, I don't like that. So I just asked them, can I be removed from your texting list? I don't use my texting for business. And they right. took me off. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, and always usually, undo. Yes. Yeah. And usually for challenges and things, that is why they want your, mm -hmm. your phone number. But they should have been smarter and said, if you'd like to receive text reminders, give us your phone number. Then it would have given yeah. you the option if you were comfortable or not comfortable. Yeah. 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 And I think a lot of that comes down to how, what you're, team support around tech is how comfortable you are having more ifs and ands in your system. Mm -hmm. So maybe she didn't have it set up. She had that availability or ability. I don't know, but yeah, either way it worked out. <laughs> and if it is legitimate that your company that you're working with, usually you can text back, stop just the word stop. And you should get a confirmation that says mm -hmm. we've unsubscribed you. Yeah. That's a little tip. Yeah, and it's so interesting because one of the things about having a software we were just talking about is you can A-B test. So you can see if the phone number, if it's required, do you have a lot of people bounce that don't sign up? 
Yep. Or do you find that the people who don't give their email address are really not your ideal client? I mean, their phone numbers are not your ideal clients, but the ones, even though it's a smaller amount, the revenue goes up because they're really committed to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It really is with its marketing. It's all about looking and seeing what's happening with that data. Yep. And that's another reason to use a service too, yeah. because you can analyze that sort of stuff much more easily than you can, especially as a non-tech savvy person. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I could do it on my website, but I don't know how, and I don't, I'm not really interested in learning. So being able to go into ConvertKit and look at those numbers that they've laid out beautifully for me is really great. We are so grateful that you've been here with us today. We're really appreciative of your time and thank I hope that we'll have quite a few people reaching out to you. So thank you everyone for being here. Take Bye. care. Bye.